Welcome to AzureTeach.net. In this video, let us discuss what are JWT tokens and refresh tokens, why they are required, why they became so popular with few example scenarios. Before we begin, please subscribe to AzureTeach.net for more videos on Azure and .NET. First, let us understand how JWT authentication works. User provides username and password to the client application. Client application forwards username and password to the authorization server. Authorization server validates username and password and fetches the details from the database, uses some key like this and an encryption algorithm to encrypt those details and returns in form of a token. When client have to access the resources, it will use the JWT token in subsequent requests and forwards it to the resource server. The resource server validates the token and return back the resources. Resources means it can be a file or a web page or anything. I am in JWT.io site and here we have an example token. Each JWT token will have three parts. The first part is called as a header and after that here we have the dot and the second part is called as payload and the third part is called as signature. The first part that's the header will have the algorithm and the type of the token. Here if you see we have the algorithm. So this token was created using HS256 algorithm and after that in the payload here generally we will have the claims related to the user and also the issue date time and when this token expires. Here we have the third part that is the signature. It shows the formula by which this token was created. So it is using this algorithm and base64 URL and code of header payload and it uses some secret like we have seen before. Here I have pasted a token from Azure and if you see in the header it has the type of token and algorithm and some other fields like x580 and kid and here we have the payload, here we have the audience. Audience means the recipient of this token and the issuer. Issuer means who issued this token and there are so many other parameters. Here we have IAT issued at time. NBF means not before time and EXP means expiration time. So this is the issued at time but it is showing here in form of number. This is actually the number of seconds after 1970 January 1st. How I am telling that date? It is defined inside the specifications of JWT. Generally in the payload part we will have the claims like the name claims or the role claims or any other thing that you want to keep like here if you see family name, given name, so many other things are there and here we have the signature. It is very hard to tamper or modify this signature because if you modify this it will show the error. Now let us understand why JWT tokens became popular. To understand this, we have to understand traditional way of authentication. Let us understand it with the help of this diagram. Here the client sends the request to the server. Server validates the username and password and it returns the response and also a session cookie. The session cookie will be created inside the server. So the server will have a session store. and It uses that to manage the session. And each time the client sends the request, it forwards the session cookie to the server. The server validates the cookie against its session store and returns back the response. This works fine if you have a single web server. Here we have multiple web servers and they are behind a load balancer. Assume the client sent the request and the load balancer dispatched the request to the web server one. The server created a cookie and sent the response back. In subsequent requests from the client, it sends the cookie. Now the load balancer dispatched that request to web server 2. The authentication will fail because the cookie information of web server 1 is not available with web server 2. Generally, load balancers are configured in a way that they always dispatch the request to the same server. In this kind of scenarios, we can use external session store providers like SQL Server where the session details will be preserved inside the database. In my career, I have worked for an application which had 37 web servers in the production. 
This mechanism looks so complex and in single page applications world, generally the session information is stored at the client side and we may use caching. I have never seen anybody using a session variable inside the API. Now let us see the JWT token. JWT token is a self-contained token. It has all the information that is required to identify the user. Here if you see it has the user email and also the username and so many other information that can be used to identify the user and also it has the expiration time and here we have the algorithm by which we can validate the token so now we can configure this kind of key in all the web servers and we can use it as we are not using any third party session provider it will be faster you might be wondering to this site we haven't provided any key but still it is able to decode our azure token how it is doing here the catch is the first part and second part of the token are base64 url encoded if you apply base64 algorithm on the token you can easily decode it but here the key thing is the signature this signature can only be possible if you use that particular key so based on this signature the server validates the JWT token. Every JWT token will have an expiration time. So after this expiration time, this token is not valid. In that case, user can re-login. Otherwise, we can use the refresh token. Asking the user to do the login for each five minutes or 10 minutes, that is not a good practice. So we will use refresh tokens. What is refresh token and why do we need it? As the name states, refresh token is another type of token that is used to regenerate the expired access token. Let us understand this with the help of this diagram. Here the user sends username and password to the authorization server and the authorization server returns JWT token and refresh token and the client uses the JWT token and it access the resource server in subsequent requests. But once the token is expired, the client sends expired token and refresh token to the authorization server authorization server validates those details and returns back new token and refresh token here the new token is a jwt token and the refresh token can be any guid or any encrypted random number so here guid is not preferred way for the refresh token because it is easy to decode the jwt specification says the refresh tokens must be preserved inside database so that we can do the validation of the refresh token. Even the refresh token will have the expiration time. So if the refresh token itself is expired, then the user must have to provide the credentials. JWT tokens are short lived and it can have very less expiration time, maybe 5 to 10 minutes or 15 minutes. But refresh tokens are long lived. It may have the expiration time range from a day to months and years. Few years ago, when I came to know about the JWT refresh tokens, the first question that came into my mind is why another token? Why can't we use the same JWT with longer expiration? The answer that I got was the security issue. I just tried to analyze and understand how the long lived JWT token causes a security issue. Assume we are using a long lived JWT token and somebody stolen your token, like somebody like Thanos stolen your token. So if you give a long lifetime to your token, the intruder can access your web server and do malicious things. So it is the reason we will give shorter lifetime to the JWT token. So each time the token expires, we will check the request and issue a new token using the refresh tokens. You may get one more question. Assume we gave five minutes of expiration time and after one minute, Thanos got access to the access token. So he can do malicious things for four minutes, right? Please note that in the web applications world, nothing is 100% secure. What we can do is we'll try to minimize the risk of attacks. And in that case, we can do some kind of validation like we can preserve the IP address in the database and we can check the request against the IP address. Please note that validating against the IP address has its own cost because if the user changes the network, the IP address will change. 
assume the user started his transaction using mobile network and later he switched to Wi-Fi network in that case the IP address will change and if your application is doing any bank transaction there is a strong chance that your application will fail let us understand it with one more scenario here Thanos is an employee of an organization and the organization allows the employees to access some of its websites from personal computer so here Thanos connected to the website and it issued a token which is long lived for 10 days and uh, Thanos got fired so as this token is long lived Thanos can still access the website for 10 days so this is a kind of security issue I will tell you a real life example recently I switched my job I used to have access to a learning website from my previous company on my last working day my employee ID and all the accesses were disabled but I could access the learning website until the next day afternoon because I have accessed the website on last working day and they might give expiration time for the token as one day as this is not a critical website my previous company might not have taken care of it it is the reason the short-lived JWT tokens are recommended and we will use the refresh token to generate a new token once the access token is expired one more scenario what happens if somebody hacks both JWT and refresh tokens here Iron Man is accessing organization website and Thanos hacked the network and got access to JWT and refresh tokens he can refresh the token as many times as he want and he can do the malicious things so in this case what we can do is we can preserve the IP address and we will issue a new token only if the issued IP address matches with the IP address from which we got the request please note that nothing is 100% secure if one mechanism is not sufficient we have to use another mechanism sometimes we have to mix multiple authentication mechanisms together like you can use a certificate based authentication also if you want to give more protection to your website within a day or two I am going to upload a new video on ASP.NET Core JWT authentication and refresh token authentication please subscribe to my channel and also enable the notifications for more videos like this and also if you like this video please hit that like button thank you